So today we will discuss the line integral in the complex plane. We know in case of a function of real variable f x, when x is real, the integral a to b f x dx, the call it as a definite integral of the function f x and it represents the area bounded by the curve between the two ordinate x equal to a x equal to b y is equal to f x and x axis. And when we define it we assume the function f x to be a continuous function then where well the f x is continuous. Then this integral is basically is nothing but the limit of the sum limit as n tends to infinity sigma f of say x i i delta x i i is 1 to n and means partition this interval into the points x 1 x 2 x n and then in between this point find out the uh, uh, number x i 1 x i 2 x i n consider the functional value at these points and then multiply by the length delta x i take the summation i 1 to n as n tends to infinity. Now, this limit if it is independent of the partition a b and exist then this limit we denote by the integral a to b f x d x and will represent the definite integral. Now, without the limit a to b we get the indefinite integral like this. We want to extend this idea to the function of a complex variable. So, here today we want to integrate we want the we will complex we want to integ integrate the complex function or uh, complex function fz that is uh, complex function uh, fz we a complex function fz be a comp uh, function it's complex defined over and we wanted to integrate this along the curve c where the c lies in the plan z plan this is about z plan we wanted to integrate this function f along the path c which lies in the complex plan so to extend this idea before we need the definition of the curve in the complex plan so let's see first how to define the curves in the complex plan complex plan. For this let us suppose x t n by t n by t be two continuous function continuous functions of the real variables t of a real variable t when we have the t varies over the interval a to b. If z of t if z of t suppose x t plus i times y t x t plus i times y t where the t varies over the interval a to b then this point z t will describe or will represent a point on the curve and will trace a curve then the point z t then the point z or z t will trace the curve as t varies from a to b a to b so with the initial point as z a with initial point 
Z A and terminal point Z B at Z B. So, the equation of the curve can be written in the parametric form. So, equation to the curve C equation to curve C in the parametric form parametric form is written as is written as z t equal to x t plus i y t x t plus i y t and t is varying from a to b. Now, when we say the curve this is our curve here is the interval a b t is varying over this interval. So, corresponding to a we have a point here say z of a corresponding to b we have a point say z of b. So, as the t varies the point on the curve varies trace. So, it will trace a curve. Okay. Now, this uh, direct curve depends on the direction because it can go in this way or may be opposite direction. So, what we consider one of the direction is a positive direction. So, we take the direction of the curve direction of the curve C is taken as a positive direction as t increases as t increases as t increases is taken as as the positive direction and opposite to it will be the negative direction okay now when the curve traces here the point if the terminal point and initial point coincide, then the curve is said to be a closed curve. So, a curve z t which is x t plus i by t is said to be closed closed if the initial point and initial point and the terminal point coincides and a curve is said to be simple is said to be simple if it does not cross or intersect or cross or intersect does not cross or intersects at a it does not except except at the point a and b means in between a b if the curve is tracing t changing from a to b then the curve should not cross to step it should not go like this for t lying between a b but at the point t equal to a and at the point t of b because if these two are equal then the curve becomes closed it is simple closed curve in that case we will say simple closed curve so uh, uh, that is the meaning of this is that if t1 and t2 are the two different point in the interval ab then z t1 and z t2 will give the different point on the curve where t1 differs from t2 that's the way. okay now we call a curve to be a smooth curve continuous dependent. So, if z t uh, say note if z t is a continuous function if z t which is x t plus i by t if this is a continuous function of t then its real imaginary part then x t and y t 
x and y will also be continuous function of t and vice versa. If x and y are continuous, then the corresponding z t point will also be continuous function of z. A curve is said to be a piecewise continuous or a function z t, this is the second point, z t the curve z is a piecewise continuous function or is a piecewise continuous if 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 it consists of finite number of continuous curve if it consists if it consists of finite number of finite number of continuous arcs continuous arc over the interval a b that is a curve a curve is said to be continuous a curve z t represented by x t plus i y t t ranges from a to b is said to be a piecewise continuous curve if it consists of a finite number of continuous arc over interval. Uh, the if suppose a curve is such which is not continuous throughout the interval a b. Suppose a curve is like this, maybe like something like this. Then there is a point of discontinuity here, point of discontinuity here. So, over the entire interval at a length at a stage the function is not a continuous function of t. But if I subdivide this intervals a b into a a 1, a 1 b 1 and then b 1 b, then in each sub intervals the function the curve is a continuous curve. So, as a curve as a whole from a to b will be considered as a piecewise continuous curve. Okay? That is the similarly, if the function is differentiable it is x and y both will be a differentiable function like this. Okay. Then third definition regarding the curve z the curve z t is such that the derivative exists d z over d t exists for each t and is continuous and is continuous in the interval a b then we say then we say the curve z equal to z t is a continuously is continuously differentiable curve over the interval a b continuously differentiable curve over the interval a b. <laughs> Another definition which is a curve is said to be a curve z equal to z t is said to be smooth smooth if z t is continuously is continuously differentiable curve curve and the derivative of this function z t is not equal to 0 is not equal to 0 for all t lying between a b. That is if the curve is such this curve is such 
which is continuously differentiable curve. It means at each point, at each point, the function curve is for each point t naught t one t two t n. The curve z equal to z t has a continuous uh, is a continuous possess a continuous derivative at each point, and also the derivative is not equal to zero. So in that case, at each point we are having a tangent, and that tangent keeps on changing its direction. So we have a turning tangent at each point from A to B. So such a curve is said to be a smooth curve when we have a turning tangent at each point on the curve. That is a curve. Now if z equal to a closed contour, we mean If z t equal to, if z a equal to z b, then the curve is said to be a closed contour. Then curve is said to be closed. All we say closed contour. Okay. Now we are interested in now the line integral of the function f z h. Okay. So before that, let us see one example where the curve. Say I just find. Parametric representation of simple smooth curve, simple smooth curve whose stress is is the ellipse. Is this is the ellipse? Nine x square plus y square is equal to nine. So suppose we wanted to find the parametric representation of this curve, a smooth curve, whose equation is given in the Cartesian form. So obviously, if we look this curve, uh, we can rewrite this curve in the form x square plus y square by nine is equal to one. So if we take x t Equal to cos t by t equal to three sine t. <coughs> then it satisfies this equation, and since it is a closed curve, simple closed ellipse. So if I take the t varying from zero to two pi, that is we have this curve. This is our x-axis. Here is y-axis. So curve is moving in this direction, positive direction. What we are doing, we are taking a point, any point on this curve as cos t and three sine t. Then this point satisfies this equation, and since it varies from o to o days and then back here, so the t will vary from zero to two pi. So the odd direction of the curve is retained. Okay, so this will be the parametric representation of the curve. Okay. Now this one is enough for uh, going further as a line integral of this. Okay. Now we take the line integral. Line integral of a function in a complex plane. In the complex. Let us suppose C B A is smooth. Let C be a smooth curve C B A smooth curve in the complex plane C in complex plane C. Okay. And let F Z be a continuous function. Function defined at each point of C. At each point of C. So this is our C smooth curve C. 
here this interval a b the equation uh, the parametric equation of the curve c is x t plus i y t. So, partition this interval uh, let the parametric of the curve let equation of the curve c is z t x t plus i y t where the t varies from a to b. Okay. Partition the interval a b the interval a b as follows a is t naught less than t 1 less than t 2 less than t n which is b. Okay. Now, once you partition this interval into some interval by choosing the point t naught t 1 t 2 and t n then corresponding to this t naught t 1 we get a point on the curve. Okay. This is the point on the curve. So, suppose we have a point here t n minus 1 here is the point. So, any point say t i minus 1 and here is the t i the corresponding point will be somewhere here. Okay. Now, in between these two point say the point. So, corresponding to this partition we have the points z naught, z 1, z 2 and z n on the curve c on the curve c. Okay. We are the z i means the value of the z at a point t j. So, yeah. Now, in between this point in between these points choose in between this point let us choose the picked up the zeta 1 zeta 2 zeta m a point choose x i 1, x i 2, x i n choose points on the curve that is zeta 1 lies between z naught to z 1, z naught to z 1 that is it, this is not fair lighting because they are complex. So, we are the zeta i lies in between z i minus 1 and z i. So, here is z i minus 1 this is our z i and here I am taking zeta i. Similarly, here is z naught this is z 1 here is somewhere we are taking zeta 1 a point on this. Now, construct this sum. construct this the value of the function at the point zeta i multiply by the delta z i. Delta z i we means this is the z i minus 1 z i. So, delta z i will be equal to z i minus z i minus 1 this is our delta z i okay. and then take the summation when i varies from 1 to z i minus 1. So, i will vary from 1 to n. Let this denote by s n. Now, once you have this partition you are getting this sum. Now, change the partition you take another sum and so on. Now, once you keep on increasing the points in between a b partitioning point then correspondingly these point on the curves are very closed and take the limit when n tends to sufficiently large or when the mode of delta z i goes to 0. In that case all the points are almost close to it. So, now take this limit limit of this sigma i equal to 1 to n f of x i i delta x i when the mode maximum of mode delta i goes to 0. When this limit maximum of this part tends to 0. So, if this limit exists, okay. 
when maximum delta equals to means the points are basically very close to each other and if this limit exists and independent of the partition of the partition of interval a b then we denote this limit by then we denote it by integral f of z dz along the curve c and is called and is known as line integral of the function f z along the path c along the path or along the curve c in the complex plane okay so that's what is so now if c is closed if the curve curve c is closed curve then we denote this thing as we denote it as integral along the path c under circle f z d z that is this shows the integration is taking along the path c which is a closed curve okay so, okay so this is now whether the this function this integral will exist under what condition this integral will exist so let's see the existence of this complex integral because what we have assumed is if the function if c be a smooth curve and f be a continuous function is it not and then we are saying that if this limit exists and independent of path then we say the integral is the line integral. but basically our claim is that under this restriction the integral will definitely exist so let us see existence of the line integral along the path c okay so so we, we assume for fz to be continuous function and c be a smooth for fz a continuous function not to let for fz a continuous function and c be a smooth curve smooth curve or maybe a piece by piece smooth curve a smooth curve b claim that the integral fz dz along the curve c will exist why let's see that okay so let us see why it is so let us suppose fz is u plus iv we are basically u is u function of x by v is also a function of x by okay and let us take g time uh, or x, uh, we have chosen the point what point we have taken we have taken the point g x i i is it not so let us take the point x i i x i i as the point say x i i plus phi i times of or let us take because this i should not be confused so let us take the psi m x i m i m okay and delta z m let us take delta x m plus i times delta y m in fact this will be the z difference and we get it. okay so let us set this point value now construct this sum. consider the sum sigma f of x i m into delta z m m is 1 to n so this will be equal to sigma m is 1 to n f of a i means replace this so u 
and v u x and y x is this by uh, so it will be a function it will be function of j m and phi m both is it not so this will be equal to u plus i v and then the we can write this thing as delta x m plus i times delta y m where u is basically a function or depends on this value psi m phi m and v also depends on psi m phi m just substitute value okay now separate out the real imaginary part so when you separate out the real imaginary part we get sigma u delta x m minus sigma v delta y m plus i times of plus i times of v sigma u delta y m plus sigma v delta x m and the limit varies from this. Now, take the limit take limit when maximum of mod delta z m tends to 0 that is delta x m will go to 0 delta y m will go to 0 ok maximum of this thing will maximum of delta x n z n sorry. So, this will go to 0 this will go to 0 delta n. Now, i m is 1 to n. So, that is the same that is the n tends to infinity. Now, u f is giving to be a continuous function we have assumed f to be continuous. So, u and v both are continuous function. So, u is continuous function this u delta x m when m is 1 to n and n tends to infinity or maximum of delta x m goes to 0 this basically is equivalent to the Riemann integral uh, say uh, definite integral as a sum of limit of the sum. So, it will give the integral a to b u this will give the integral a to b u d instead of this we can say integral uh, not a we can write a u d x without this limit then I will see and this integral is taken over all the curve c. So, let us see this is integral v d y along the path c and then i times this will be integral u d y along c plus integral v d y along c ok. Because of the uh, function of single uh, real variables we know that this can be uh, this limit will exist and give the integral of u dx, integral of v dy, integral and so on and so forth. So, if function f is analytic uh, is continuous and this is a smooth curve then we have this limit exist and we get this value and that so completes that shows the existence of the in line integral therefore, is integral f z dz along the path c will exist clear that is what. Now, there are certain properties which this line integral enjoy as we have in case of a real variable case and that like a definite integral we have <laughs> uh, some of the two definite integral is that some of their integral the constant times of one function integral of this is constant times the integral of the f d x and like this. So, similarly there are few properties which is the basic properties of line integral and the first property is that there are two functions say f and g f t f z plus g z then this integral or even if we multiply by constant dz is the line integral of this function fz dz plus line integral of gz dz along the path c. Second a constant times of fz dz is the same as k times in line integral of the function fz dz along the path c ok. Then also this is interesting one suppose we have a curve c 
and the integral of this function fz dz is there. If I break up this curve into two parts c1 and c2 retaining the same direction then this integral will be the same as integral c1 fz dz plus integral c2 f z z. Okay? <coughs> Where c1 and c2 are the partition of the curve c and so on. Now, okay, let us see an example where is line integral. How to compute this line integral? The question is now how to find out the limit. So, how to compute line integral? Because we know the definition by definition is line integral is nothing but the limit of this sum is it not that is the line integral you take the partition of this take the limit of this and when limit exists we say the part uh, line integral will exist but this is the basic uh, by basic definition of a line integral but every line integral you cannot write it you cannot do every times this of calculation partition again so how to compute it the physical the there is one result which is very interesting and will give directly the clue how to calculate the line integral. The result is this. Let C be a piece by smooth path represented by represented by the curve by the equation z equal to z t, where t varies from a to b. <coughs> Let f z be a continuous function. continuous function on the curve C. Then the result says the line integral f z d z along the path C is nothing but a definite integral a to b f of z t into d z by d t into d t. So, this is very good result because directly the line integral has been transferred to a definite integral and we are accustomed of solving such a definite integral is it not that is. So, let us see first uh, how to uh, this uh, apply it first in order to bring it to line from line integral to the definite integral of t what we have to do we must know the parametric equation of the curve c. Once we know the parametric equation of the curve, then calculate the dz by dt, which is very simple, and then find out the value of the function at each point on the curve, that is f of z t, and thus uh, substitute the limit so that the entire path is covered. That is, t varies from a to b. So once it is there, then you can cover entire path and get it. So, in order to what are the steps is taken? Steps to be followed. Number one step is that write the parametric equation to the curve C. Write the parametric equation of the curve C in the form z t equal to x t plus y i y t i y t where the t varies from a to b. Then second one is once you get this substitute it calculate the d z by d t and the value of the function at a point z arbitrary point z 
and then use the formula use formula 1 to solve the integral okay and integration of limit should be adjusted okay so let us see why the proof of this is very simple how does it follow the proof is like this we have seen we have seen the integral f z d z along the path c is nothing but what this was the integral remember u d x minus v d y along the path c plus i times integral u d y plus v d x just previous when we have shown the existence of this line integral we have come across about this so this is the left hand side and the right hand side will also give the same value what is the right hand side right hand side is integral a to b u plus i v f z is u plus i v d z means d x by d t plus i times d y by d t and then d t is it not so basically ticket cancel and when you open it this comes out to be the same as left hand side so this way we can easily get okay let's take an examples now based on this okay so suppose i take okay. evaluate this line integral evaluate the line integral real part of z square dz along the path c where c is the curve is the smooth curve is the curve join from is the curve uh, as shown curve in between curve in between in between zero 2 2 plus 4 i s s shown below s shown below the first is c is the line segment c is the line segment joining the point joining the point z equal to 0 to z equal to 2 plus 4 i second path we uh, says the c is the curve c is the curve curve which is which is union of c1 and c2 where c1 uh, as shown in the figure of c1 x axis from c1 is the path along x axis from 0 to 2 while the c2 is the path is a vertical path path from z equal to 2 to z equal to 2 plus 4 i along y axis okay then third is the c is a parabola Parabola y is equal to x square joining 
the points z equal to 0 and z equal to 2 plus 4 line. So, we have seen these three cases. This is the first case z equal to 0 is this point, here is z 2 plus 4 i, this is. The, so, this is the first pair, this is first path. Here, this is x axis, this is y axis, x axis, y axis. Second path says C is the curve, which is the union of C 1 and C 2, joining path along x axis from 0 to 2. So, 0 to 2, this is C 1, and then 2 to 2 plus 4 i in a vertical direction is here. So, this is C 2. So, C 1 union C 2 gives the C and third path is this y is equal to x square. So, it is a yeah that is a y equal to x square is a parabola square ok. So, this will be <coughs> our parabola y equal to x square from 0 0 to 2 plus this is the point here 2 plus 4 i. Okay. So, these are the three path which we are choosing. We want the value of this line in integral along these three various path. So, let us the case 1, this is case 2, this is case 3. Let us evaluate this in integral along various. So, first path. So, along 1, the line integral c is given by this. So, what is the parametric equation of the curve? The parametric equation to the curve c is z t will be what? This is the point is it not joining 0 0 and 2 4 straight line. So, basically <coughs> the equation of this straight line becomes y equal to 2 x. Is it not? So, if I take x to be t, then y becomes 2t. So, if I take x to be t, then y becomes 2t like and t must vary such that this entire thing is covered. So, if I take t x varies from 0 to 2 and t I am taking x to be t. So, t must vary from 0 to 2. Did you get me? Means, here what I did, I have calculated the segment joining these two points line segment equation to line segment is by minus by dash by minus by 0 equal to by double dash minus by 0 over x double dash minus x 0 x minus 0. So, that becomes by equal to 2 x means each point on this curve satisfy this condition. So, if I take x to be a arbitrary thing t then the y will have 2t, but x the t must vary in such a way so that the entire path is covered. So, if I take t equal to 0 here and t equal to 2 here, then t varies from 0, so it will cover from here to here in a linear way. So, this is the parametric equation of the curve. Once you get the parametric equation, then you just calculate it. What is our integral? Integral was uh, integral c real part of z square dz. So, first you function you calculate what is our function here f of z is the real part of z square. z square means x square x plus i by whole square. So, this will be equal to x square minus y square plus 2 i times x by. So, real part of this means x square minus y square. Now, compute this value at the point of the curve. So, this value when you take this function what is the so integral the curve is x square minus y square and that x is what x is t y is 2 t. So, we get from here is the value of this at z t is nothing but t square minus 4 t square is it not because that so z t becomes uh, and z t is z t 
is t plus i times 2t. So, dz by dt becomes 1 plus 2i dt, 2i that is all. So, substitute this. So, integral real part of this means t square minus 3. So, minus 3 t square and then dz by dt. So, this is equal to integral real part of z square dz by dt and dt and t varies from this. So, d, dz by dt is 1 plus 2i and t and what should be the limit for t? t varies from 0 to 2. So, we get t is 0 to 2 and that will be the line. Okay? So, if we compute these values, the value will come out to be what? That we calculate is whatever the value is coming say minus uh, 1 plus 2 y minus t square. So, when you compute it, so t cube by 3 that is minus t cube and then minus 6 i t cube by 3 is it not? And then take the limit 0 to 2. So, finally, you are getting to be minus 8 1 plus 2 i minus 8 1 plus 2 i this will be. Now, along the path along path 2. The part 2 is that first path is C 1 then C 2. So, along C 1 the parametric equation of the curve z t y coordinate is 0. So, x coordinate only. So, it will be the x t only by 0 i times 0. So, what is x t here? That x, x becomes t. So, here is t and y becomes here along this path x t is t, where t varies from 0 because from here to here to 0 to 2 and y because y is 0. So, y is always 0 along this. So, this will be 0 part and here we get t, t lying between 0 to t. Okay? Hence, integral of this real part of z square dz along path c is <coughs> real part z square with x square minus y square. So, x square minus y square dz by dt dt and t varies from 0 to 2. Substitute the value x and y, x is t. So, is 0 to 2, x is t, so t square and then dz by dt, dz by dt becomes 1, so it t and that value will come out to be t cube by 3 and then 0 to 2. So, it is the 8 by 3. Okay? Then third part, along third, the path, uh, uh, sorry, along the uh, C 1, along C 2, along, this is along C 1. Then along C 2, compute the calculate, the path C 2 is, path C 2, z 2 is, if I take C 2, the x coordinate is always 2 by changing. So, it can it not be written 2 plus i t, where the t varies from 0 to 4. Okay? Then, you compute this and similarly, we get for the other. So, let us uh, let us stop here. Next time, we will continue from here. Thank you.